As doctors, we never want to be in the discussion after a big sporting event, but unfortunately that's been the case so far at UFC 294. First off with what happened during this low blow, and then with the same position here when Johnny Walker was deemed not okay to continue after an illegal knee to the head. In this video, I'm gonna give you my thoughts. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. Now, the first big controversy and story here, not really controversial, I guess, but what happened with Victor Henry is one of the physicians covering an event, you know, there are certainly times where you think an athlete is okay to continue and they're saying something's wrong, but really you don't necessarily think that's the case. And so you have to kind of gently try to tell them that you disagree. But in something like this, where the guy is clearly miserable and clearly in pain, I don't agree with saying that it wasn't what this fighter thought it was. Victor Henry was pretty adamant that he got hit below the belt. We even heard from his coach that he was on the way to the hospital and was throwing up and he was gonna get an ultrasound scan done of his scrotum just to look and make sure everything was okay. It's a really unfortunate to see a physician come in and kind of question in this moment. Not really something that we would typically want to do again. We're there to just take care of the fighter. And at some point, you have to trust what an athlete is telling you, especially when it's something as significant like this. When we talk about testicular or scrotal trauma, you can actually rupture them. And so part of the evaluation here is going to be an ultrasound to look and see if there's been any actual damage to the testy. I mean, you can have even something called a testicular torsion where they get twisted and the blood supply can get cut off. And so this can be a very, very serious injury that you definitely don't want to mess with because of somebody's reproductive capability. And so an unfortunate thing to see right away, hopefully a good learning experience for physicians, sports doc students, et cetera, watching, try to not be questioning of when an athlete is telling you something is hurt, especially when it could be as significant as the implications of having a scrotal trauma. The next controversial one here was the Johnny Walker, Mohamed Ankalaya fight. And first of all, yes, there was no doubt Johnny Walker definitely got hit with a hard knee, okay? There's no question here that this could be a blow, hits him on the lower part of the chin, that could compromise a fighter to the point where they're not safe to continue, they're not able to protect themselves to continue, and so you have to appropriately evaluate as the ringside physician did, right? We all remember what happened with Aljamain Sterling when he took that illegal knee, and sometimes you truly just can't continue, and you need to be able to at least safely and reasonably protect yourself, especially in a situation like this where the reason you might be concussed is because of some illegal blow or illegal action. The first part of this whole sequence, the referee here appropriately asked the ringside physician to come in and evaluate Walker for a concussion, which sounds a little bit odd in the sport of mixed martial arts when part of your goal is to trying to cause somebody to have a concussion and get knocked out. But like I said, in this case, when it was this question of an illegal blow, that's exactly what the ringside doc should be doing. Determine if he's concussed, determine if he's fit to continue. The key part to understand here, first of all, is that a concussion is a subjective diagnosis. There's no blood tests, there's no imaging scan, there's no exact cutoff number on all these screening tests that determine whether or not somebody has a concussion. So one physician might evaluate an athlete, say they have a concussion, and another physician might disagree and think they don't have a concussion. There's no clearly defined measure or objective point to say you're concussed or no, you're not concussed. What the doctor was doing here, we heard, of course, he asked Johnny Walker where he was or what country he was in, which honestly, when I first went to answer that question, I probably would have gotten it wrong, to be totally honest. And for somebody who's not speaking their native language, the doctor is speaking English, Johnny Walker's native language is not English. If you're really going to rely on somebody's answers for an assessment of their awareness and alert orientation status, you should at least be doing it in the language they're familiar with. And for somebody who's flying overseas, maybe he really doesn't know where he is, aside from the concussion. It sounded like the other thing he asked Walker was what round is it? And that's a little bit more reasonable. Walker should know what round it is, getting a little bit more at the orientation. My big issue with this, and I think the thing to learn from here is that I think in this case, two orientation questions, that's hard for me to personally say that's a concussion, they're done. I would have liked to have seen number one, a translator come in who can accurately communicate those awareness questions. And number two, take the full amount of time. I, you know, part of a concussion assessment is measuring somebody's balance, their coordination, their muscle strength, their eye tracking, their cranial nerves, not purely their awareness. And so for somebody who has already taken some hits in an MMA fight, is speaking a different language, asking those two awareness questions I think are a difficult measurement of whether or not somebody is fit to continue and is concussed. Now, I'm not saying that Walker was not concussed. That's not the point here. It certainly is possible that that knee disoriented him enough to where he was not able to continue. But I just think that there should have been a little bit better of an assessment of whether or not he was concussed. Take the full time. 
this is so impactful to someone's career. We saw what happened with Ankalaev, with that whole mess. And, and so it's so tough to insert those medical decisions when they could have such a monumental impact on someone's career like this. Now, on the same side, you have to be really careful because if you send a compromised fighter back out and he gets injured worse, you're also putting their career at risk. And so this is a tough, tough spot to be in for a ringside physician. But I think just looking back, I think everybody would agree that it would be nice to number one, have somebody who speaks the same language perform that concussion assessment. And number two, take the full time and do a little bit more of an extensive, more thorough concussion assessment other than just simply two orientation questions 30 seconds after you've been kneed in the head. I think a lot of people are gonna have a hard time with that, even though after a few minutes or so, the rest of the assessment, they may in fact be okay to continue. They may not, but at least give them that chance, do that more deeper assessment because we have those deeper assessment tools for a reason. Hopefully ringside docs, hopefully students, et cetera, can learn from this. Number one, try to not question an athlete when it's dealing with an injury as serious as something affecting their reproductive capability down the road. And number two, I think when the stakes are so high for something, take all that time you can. Don't try and jump right away to assessing whether or not somebody has a concussion. Take as much time as possible. Go as in-depth as you possibly can to be absolutely certain and remove all grounds for speculation or question. That's it for the video. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.